Hello viewers, welcome back to the lab. Um, we have a teardown and possible repair uh, in this video. Um, I picked this uh, universal counter up off eBay. Um, it was described as um, powers on but rattles and the power switch doesn't work. Um, and untested otherwise. So I thought I'd pick this up, it wasn't too much money. Um, I could do with a, um, a counter. Now when I looked at this one I thought it did actually look a bit chintzy to be honest. but. Um, I read up the spec and it seemed to be okay, so I thought I'd buy it, try it out, see what it's like. Um, if we can fix it, I might keep it for the lab. Uh, and if I don't think it's any good, then I might just resell it on eBay. This is as it's arrived and it does indeed rattle. Um, so I'm not going to turn this on because I don't know what uh, is rattling around inside. Um, the power switch does seem a bit, um, doesn't feel quite right. So. I think there's obviously something going on there. So uh, best to uh, take the top off this and then we'll see what we can see. So according to the spec sheet on this, um, it um, is a 2.4 gigahertz counter with an oven, oven controlled oscillator in it. So it should be pretty good. Um, I think the top just comes off. I think the screws are just underneath here. Ping. But um, in terms of the actual functions on the front, it does seem a pretty basic. So it'd be interesting to see what it's like when we turn it on. Right, uh, so we've got the lid off. Uh, it does certainly look a bit old school. Um, it looks all through hole stuff. Um, we've got a transformer. We do have uh, an oven oscillator there, um, 10 me megahertz OCXO. Couple of shielding cans just there, one for channel A and one for channel C. I don't know what's happened to channel B, maybe it's gone missing. Um, what's rattling? Screw. Got a screw loose. <laughs> um, where's that come from? Uh, not sure. Maybe we'll find out later. This is an excellent opportunity to mention my sponsor, PCB Way, the full featured friendly PCB prototyping service. PCB Way offer an extensive range of services and options for PCB prototyping and manufacture including custom options and full assembly, all with loyalty rewards and discount coupons. With quick turnaround and competitive pricing, if you need PCBs for your next electronics project, then simply follow the links in the video description and use PCB Way. Right, I'll tell you what, let's just do a quick um, scan around. Uh, we've got the front panel here with the um, buttons and the display on. That is on a separate board, which just slots in at the front. Um, looks like a standard LCD module. We've got power switch which runs through to a clunking switch on the back. Um, got a voltage selection switch which just taps onto the transformer, probably power supply. Um, we've got a controller IC down in there with um, version 2.9 written on it, so that's obviously programmable. And then we have the oven controlled oscillator over here. Uh, and two shielded cans, one each for each channel. So uh, power input on the back, some big caps down there. So let's have a look at this power switch. Oh, hang on. Uh, let me just zoom you in. Uh, you can see the power switch just down there. Um, and it looks like and feels like it's not actually latching into um, it's latching, it's not latching on or off. And um, hopefully you can see there, there's no wires connected to it. So that's been joined on there. I think what somebody has done is the power switch has got obviously gone a bit, a bit sketchy. And they've just wired this in permanently. So whenever there's power in on the, the power socket, it, it powers on. Um, which is, yeah, fine, I can understand that. Right, so if we take a look at the uh, front panel, uh, we've got the on-off switch, uh, REM indicator, gate, uh, 
function button, gate time button, uh, that's missing its um, key top. Uh, I've got an attenuator switch and MES at slash local. Oh, no. um, local or, um, but I'm not sure what that would be. Remote? Um, yeah, I'm not sure what that is. Um, local normally means local or remote control, but I don't know. Oh, we'll find out. Um, we've got a trigger control knob there. We've got channel A, uh, which looks like it might have a 10 to 1 attenuator on it. Um, channel C with some LEDs, min and max, um, and that's about it. So yeah, not a lot on the front. On the back, we've just got the power input and RS-232. Right, let's power this on and see what we get. Right, so I've had a, um, a look at some of the documentation. I think most of the functions are accessed with the function key, obviously. Uh, I think check is a check internal check frequency. Um, function FRA is frequency channel A. Channel C, period, total count, and we're back to check. So I think if we do channel A, we need to push that in. So if I just plug in a, a signal here, I've just got 10 megahertz coming out of my signal generator, which also has a uh, oven oscillator in, and it has been calibrated against um, the Droitwich long wave transmitter. So it should be pretty accurate. Uh, let's see what we guess. So if we get an extra decimal place by increasing the gate time, It's uh, looking pretty good. Um, everything seems to work properly. Um, let's just try channel C. which has less resolution, unfortunately. Um, so I should pop that back to channel A, which has more resolution on it. So we also have um, period oh, doesn't look very good, does it? Um, Total, that's just going to count totals. So, yeah, there's not a huge amount of resolution on the period function. Um, I'm just outputting um, one millisecond there. So, if I change that to 100 milliseconds, yeah, it's a bit up and down that. It's not, I'm not sure how useful that's going to be. Um, but uh, it does appear that the just the your regular frequency is pretty good. I change this back to say one megahertz and twenty, which is the maximum my signal generator does. It all looks fine. So I think what we should do um, before I start thinking about trying to calibrate this. Um, I'll take the board out and we'll see if we can do anything with that power switch because it would be nice to have that uh, working again. I think. Yay! Right. Stray earth wire there, just dangling in the breeze. Uh, um, is that supposed to be connected up here to the chassis? Who knows? 
Right, so I've had a quick look around this. I think this earth wire here should be connected up here. It looks like it has been used, so I don't think it's just been missed off in when it was manufactured. And um, this screw here, this, this nut, seems like it's been slightly burred. So I think somebody's had that off. Um, and there's no evidence of the green lock, thread lock on it. So I think that should be connected up there. So we can reinstate that. Right, so we have the power switch out, and uh, yeah, as you can see, the latching mechanism isn't working properly, so sure, this just must be a mechanical issue. Right, it looks like what's happening is when um, it's at the, this position here, I think this needs to be just... on this side, so when it comes, so the little pin follows the plastic down, drops into that, and then comes up into a little section up there that locks it in place. Um, and then when you click it out, it releases, but when it comes back up, it doesn't come all the way over this way to complete the cycle. Too much. Let's give it a tweak back. Well, I think a little bit of fiddling round. I think I've managed to get that to work pretty well. Oh, well, I guess before we do that, we should probably check the continuity of this switch, just to make sure that there wasn't a contact issue with it. So, these should be open. Yeah, open, and they should now be closed. Yeah, nothing between there. They're closed. Right, excellent. Yeah, that works. Okay, that's the switch all rewired. Now, before I put this switch back in, um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take the opportunity to um, tighten up some of these screws here, because these bits here are a bit wobbly. So uh, I'm just going to tighten those up first. Right, uh, always good to check things on a multimeter, so I've just got this in um, ohms range, so the switch is off, so there should be nothing between those two, which is good. Put the switch on, and we should get the resistance across the transformer. 95 ohms, and if we switch the voltage selector to 110, or 115 as it says there, we should have a lower resistance across here. Yes, there we go. Um, so turn that back off. Yep, everything good. Not forgetting to put that back. So I have this all reassembled now. Um, it's all looking pretty good. Um, so the power switch has been reinstated there, um, so that's uh, all still working fine. Uh, the oven oscillator, the screws for this uh, are just self-tappers and they just screwed into the can and um, that was probably why we we're missing one on the side there because it's, they're just threaded out so there's nothing left there to screw to so I've only got one screw in there so I've just added a cable tie just to hold it in place. Uh, before we turn this on I thought it might be a nice idea just have a quick look at that CPU that's down in there um, and see exactly what that is.
So the device we have in here is an Atmel 8089C51, which is an 8-bit microcontroller with 4K of flash ROM, um, 128 bytes of internal RAM, 32 programmable lines, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, it's a, it's a, a little 8-bit microcontroller uh, running the show. And the other device is actually a Tesla branded IC. Uh, that is an MSBB003. No information on that on the internet, so I'm not sure what that is. Now, over the last day or two, I've been playing around with the calibration on this, and I think I've got it dialed in as best I can. So if I just change this to um, frequency on A, and turn the gate time up to one second. Uh, we've got 10 megahertz there, and I've just turned it on, so it's going to fluctuate around a little bit, and, but it should settle down uh, pretty much bang on 10 megahertz. So this is now um, fully working. I'm uh, really, really pleased with this. The only disappointing thing, I'm just missing those two buttons there. So if there's anybody out there who knows where or what button key tops these are, um, I'd be interested to know um, because it would be nice to replace them. Um, I've had a look at online and at various places, but I can't find any which are um, a, an exact match, unfortunately. So, yeah, if anybody knows um, or has any spares of those, get in contact. I uh, could do with a couple of them. So I think this is going to make a, a perfect addition to the lab. I'm sure it'll come in useful at some point. Um, well worth the, uh, I think it was £30 that I paid to, uh, to pick this up. Um, and cost nothing to fix. So I want to thank my patrons for supporting the channel. Um, it's their donations that help uh, make videos for you to watch. If you want to become a patron yourself, then there's links in the video description down below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one, and I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.